Hey everyone, it's me, Cyan, and welcome to my channel. It has been a few months since I last posted a video, and it's needless to say that these past couple months have been pretty crazy. So before I go into this video, I want to make sure that everyone is aware of what's going on in the world today. I've included some links in the description box with some things that you can read about the Black Lives Matter movement. There are some cards about where you can donate to like anti-police violence organizations and more ways to help support Black Lives and educate yourselves. So even though I am starting to post videos again, I definitely do not want to take any attention away from the Black Lives Matter movement. And also I wanna make sure that everyone knows that if you're watching any of my videos, especially in the month of June, or continuing all the proceeds or anything that I make from any of my videos is gonna go directly into the organization supporting anti-police violence and supporting Black lives in different ways. So continuing into today's topic, I finally finished my sophomore year at Stanford. Classes ended today, and I thought it would be a good idea to go into all of the classes that I've taken at Stanford thus far, starting with my freshman year. And I got this idea when I watched the video by Nina Wong. She goes to MIT and made a really, really, really entertaining video ranking all of her classes in like a tier list. So I'm gonna do the same thing for my experience at Stanford. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so I'm gonna move to this side so you guys have this full screen area because I made this tier list on my laptop. So as you can see, I've got like a bunch of my classes down at the bottom. Red is for fall quarter, green is for winter quarter, and then blue I did for my spring quarter. All right, so my freshman year, I was in this program called Italic, which is like a living in the arts program where you live with the people in your class. It's year long. It's all about immersing yourselves in the arts. And I think the thing that I enjoyed the most from that, beyond the classes, getting to know the people around me, the topics, because they ranged so much, it didn't really feel like we got to like delve into each topic if we were super interested in it. But I think the flip side of that is also like, if you're not interested in a certain lecture topic, tomorrow it was gonna be something completely different. And we got to know the professors really, really well, and they're very well established in their fields. I think for now, I'm gonna put Italic in the B tier. I really enjoyed the classes and I really enjoyed getting to know the people, even though I feel like the classes and like lectures themselves could have been a little bit more hands-on. All right, so the next class I'm gonna be talking about is CS106AJ. And so CS106A is pretty much the complete intro class to computer science at Stanford. I took it with a J, which basically means that it was in JavaScript. I don't think that they teach this class anymore because they've moved everything over to Python, but I really like struggled in the class. At first I was fine because I do understand like the logic behind computer science, but I didn't have any experience. So because I was moving so fast, we were building on so many concepts really quickly. I like really felt like I was losing track of time. Lectures were really rough to get through, but I really, really liked my section. Almost everything I learned in this class was from my section classes. I think I enjoyed it less than I did italic, so I'm gonna put it in C right now. I came out of it pretty much unscathed. <laughs> it literally wasn't my favorite class, and I haven't really taken any like real CS classes since then, so that probably indicates a lot. So the last like larger class that I took in the fall was hybrid sculpture, and hybrid sculpture I absolutely adored. So basically we made art using digital programs that translated into physical objects, and honestly, sculpture installation is what I love. If you watch my other videos, um, and it pretty much played into exactly what I was looking for, especially in the fall, and I really liked it. So I'm gonna put it in the A tier. There we go. And the last class that I have is dorm gov. And that's basically a class that everyone who is president of their dorm or like the financial advisor of the dorm takes. It was just honestly at an inconvenient time. It was like at 7 p.m. on a Monday. I had like club tennis at the same time. So I was rushing to that and then rushing to tennis. But I really did learn some valuable like leadership skills from it, which I was able to apply to my extracurricular activities. So I do appreciate that. So I'm gonna put it in C together with my CS class. So that's my freshman fall. I honestly had a good transitionary period. It wasn't a lot of work. It really allowed me to integrate into the dorm culture and into Stanford and get a feel for what it was gonna be like. So let's move on to winter. This was a different quarter. 
So I took four classes and immediately my eye is drawn to Math 21, which is like the last in the calculus series. I really didn't enjoy it, even though it was taught really well and I really liked the professor. Just for some reason, I wasn't able to get the information in my head. So yeah, I'm gonna put that into the C tier. I think if I had like a biggest tip for myself in the winter quarter, I wouldn't have taken math and our university writing requirement, which is power one in the same quarter. Let's talk about that next. So power one, I actually took as a part of the italic program that I mentioned before. Every freshman takes a form of power one. If you're not in italic, you would like sign up and like rank your favorite topics and then you'd be put into a writing class. It like goes over the basics of writing essays and everything and we go over like ethos, pathos, like all those things, but like under the lens of a certain topic. Because it was italic, it was just art and visuals in general. We could pretty much pick any topic. It's not a universal experience for everyone. I don't think most people really enjoy Power One, but I really did. Our professor was like super passionate about teaching us. I'm gonna put it into probably be because it was really hard and even though like our professor was putting in a lot of work because it was winter quarter we were all pretty checked out at that point so cs11 si is actually a class that was student directed so that's what the si means it's like student initiated so one of my friends was teaching that class and um it was just about like how to make virtual reality like an intro to unity making spaces and i loved it it was like one of my favorite classes so i'm gonna put in the a tier so kind of along the same lines, very creative as well, was ME 110, which is part of the product design requirement and taught in the D school. It was only like once a week and I took it with one of my best friends. We just like sketched and learned about drawing techniques. It's pass fail, so you were pretty much just graded on your final portfolio. You really get out of it what you put in. I would recommend this class definitely to anyone who like wants to learn how to sketch. Even if you're already making art and you're an artist, I still think that you can get a lot out of it just by honing in those like basic techniques. I'm gonna put in the A tier. Great, so that was my winter quarter. And so my last quarter, I took only three more classes on top of italic and they were all pretty low key. I'm gonna start with bio E80 and that's basically like the intro bioengineering class. It was honestly like not very hard and like not a lot of work necessarily. The professors were clearly extremely engaged in what they were teaching, but I think that it was really hard to retain students going to lecture just cause like the problem sets that we were going over weren't very related to the material that was being taught in class. And because it was such a huge class, I don't think we were really able to delve into the topics during lab. And that made people just kind of do the work on their own time. I don't think we got the most out of it that we could have. But personally, it got me really excited about bioengineering topics and ideas and lessons and stuff like that. So I'm gonna put this class in the, I think C. I enjoyed it more than the other classes that are in C. So I think I'm gonna put it in B just cause um, I did actually enjoy the topics, but I do think it could have been taught in a little bit more structured and engaging way. So kind of in the same vein is the class EMED 228. It is a class taught in the med school, but it's virtual reality storytelling. So it was taught by, I think, a doctor or professor who was really into virtual reality research. And the entire class was basically us like writing a script or being able to portray medical treatment in a new way through virtual reality. I don't necessarily think I learned a lot from this class just because there weren't a lot of graded components. And the biggest things that we did were just writing the script and going to film them. And then we sent that footage over to someone to edit it separately. So that's why I'm gonna put this probably in the, similarly in B. Cause I did enjoy it more than the other classes that are in C. So the last class that I wanna talk about is ME 101. And it's like the pillar to the product design core curriculum. It was a lot of work, don't get me wrong. You work in teams, you work on like different design projects and it's a lot of material that you have to get and buy. It is very, very time consuming, but it's also extremely rewarding. You make projects that are like interactive and movable and you present them. The only thing that I didn't love was this like sketchbook that we had to use and we had to like draw every single day and you get graded based on how many pages you're able to fill. But in general, I think I learned a lot from this class and it was one of my favorites and I learned the most and I'm gonna put it in the A tier. So there we go. So those were all of the classes I took my freshman year of college. As you can see, they were all pretty varied and I had mixed feelings about them. But if I'm gonna be honest, I didn't really regret any of them, I learned something from each 
of the classes even if I didn't enjoy it at the moment. I think that the best advice that I have for picking classes is probably to give yourself a good balance of type of work that you're going to be doing. I always try to have one class that had like problem sets, one class that was more writing based, one class that was project based, and that really really helped me vary my time. So I'll also be going over all of my classes for my sophomore year in the next video, but I wanted to make sure to get this video out for all of the incoming freshmen this year. Um, I know that it's super tough to figure out what classes you want to take. There is a huge selection and it's hard to narrow it down when you're like overwhelmed by the amount of information that's coming at you. So I hope this video kind of gives you a perspective on what I did. I feel like I could have put some of those classes that were in the A tier in the superior S tier, but I want to keep it open for my sophomore year. I'm going to reserve that right for like just my very, very top favorite classes. So stay tuned for that. I will be releasing it soon, hopefully. Let me know if there are any questions. I would be super happy to elaborate on any of my thoughts and ideas and the ways that I kind of approach all of my classes and planning out my schedule. I will see you in the next video and have an amazing day. See ya!